Hello there, and welcome to my desktop. Rust has been all the rage these days, and not without good reason. Uh, it's been a very versatile programming language, and for new Rust users, it's been might be a little bit of a hurdle to trying to figure out what project to get started with. And so today we're looking at a simple backup transfer tool or a file copy program just to get look, a look at the basics of the Rust ecosystem. So without talking too much, let's go ahead and hop on over to our desktop and get started. To start, we're going to open up a terminal and go into the directory where we keep our projects. For me, this is just my desktop. We'll create our new project by running cargo new backup transfer tool. And then we will change directories into that new directory that Rust just created. From there, we need to import a create that will help make our code a little simpler. We can go to create.io and find what we need and then add it to our cargo.toml file under the dependencies header, or something that cargo that does for us is we can type cargo, add, and then the name of the crate that we want, and cargo will search the local crates database and add the dependency to our cargo tile cargo toml file for us. It will add it with the correct version under the correct heading as well. Now we will begin to code in our source main file. We'll be adding the following library imports to extend the functionality of our program. Next, we need to get rid of the print line line as we don't need it. And then we're going to add a function that will do most of the work. This new function line that we created had, takes two arguments, each of the type pointer to a path. Now we're ready to code the main part of our program. The way we want our program to run is by typing in the command name followed by two arguments in the command line to specify the source and the destination folders. In our main function, we will start by adding a line that collects the command input into a vector of strings, skipping over the command name. Next, we're going to use a Rust keyword called match to parse the command arguments. We're going to pass the arguments as new path variables into our copy files functions if there are only two arguments. Otherwise, we will print a line to the console telling us that there are invalid arguments. This is all we're going to be doing with our main function. Now we're going to work on our copy files function.
To start, we're going to initialize a for loop to walk through each file in our source folder. We're going to be using the walk dir crate to do this as it will by default walk through any subdirectories in the source folder, eliminating the need for us to have to write more code to add this functionality. Because the file variable in our loop is a result of a directory entry, we need to reassign itself to itself with the unwrap function at the end, so that is indeed a directory entry for our needs. Then we're going to assign the path to our file to its own variable. Then we are going to check if the path is actually a file, as we will not need to copy an empty, any empty folders. If it is, we are going to create the new path variable to hold the path of our copied file. We don't want to copy over a file that already exists, just in case the backup copy is newer than the source copy. To do this, we need to check if the new path exists on the file system. Inside that if statement, we are going to pull the metadata from the source path and the new path and store the date modified info into their own variables. If the new file is newer than the source file, then we will skip the copying the file over. Otherwise, if the source file is newer, we will update the new file. Now we will expand our file exists statement with an else, just in case the new file does not yet exist. We will create the parent directory for the new file, just in case it doesn't currently exist, then we'll copy the source file to the new file location.
all that's left at this point is to test our program and make sure it works. Typically when we run a test of a program, we run it by running the command cargo run. However, because we are relying on two arguments for our program to fully run, it will not work. What we need to do is add two dashes after the cargo command followed by our arguments. So for this program, we were doing cargo run dash dash our source folder and then our destination folder. As you can see, it ran just fine. And that's it. It's a basic backup transfer tool and just 43 lines of code. If you liked what you saw here, please leave a like and a comment, and please visit the donation link below. It's been about a year since I made my last coding tutorial, and the reason for that is because I started a new job, I added a new family member to my family, and I've just had very limited free time to be able to do my hobby projects. So if you want to see more coding videos or even see a 3D printing video, I highly suggest you support and drop a donation below. Uh, if you're not already, please get subscribed and have a good day. Thanks.